This is the Pokemon type chart, the backbone to every Pokemon battle, the cheat sheet to the most complicated game of rock, paper, scissors ever invented, the thing that's burned itself into our collective subconscious. Well, the green squares at least. 15 years I've been playing this game, and I still can't remember all these resistances. It looks pretty complicated, but basically across the top we've got the type of the defending Pokemon, down the side we have the type of the move being used against them, just find the intersection and boom, you got yourself a multiplier for the move, simple as that. Only there's one problem, this chart is only really helpful for single type Pokemon, like a Charmander is just pure fire, but once your little Fuego hits level 36 and sprouts some wings, things get a little more complicated. Say your Charizard gets hit by an ice type attack. Well, consulting the chart, fire resists ice, meaning it has a 0.5 times multiplier, but flying is weak to ice for a 2 times multiplier. So if we multiply those two multipliers together, we get a real multiplier of 1, meaning that the first multiplier was nothing more than a multiplier, and you haven't actually multiplied anything at all. Get it? On the other hand, if you use a rock type attack on Charizard, both fire and flying take two times damage, so you're actually killing one dragon with the power of four stones. See, Charizard may look all big and bad, but slaying a dragon really ain't all that hard, you just gotta throw a rock at it. What do you mean it's not really a drag? All that is to say, for any dual type Pokemon, the simple type chart goes from something like this to something more like this. Oh! Luckily, this is as bad as it gets. A Pokemon can only have, at most, two types. Sure, there are some very niche situations where you could add a third type onto a Pokemon temporarily and create a 4D type chart never meant to be seen by mortal eyes, but in general, Pokemon has refrained from giving us that fabled tri-typed Pokemon. There are Pokemon that can change types, lose types, but they always have a max of two, and that's a hard and fast rule. But lately, I've been feeling a little, uh, oh, I don't know, a little, a little rebellious, if you know what I mean. So what do you say we uh, we just take that rule there and, uh, I don't know, maybe just do a <clears throat> dual type Pokemon are old news, has-beens, been there, done that. I don't care about four times resistances anymore. I want to know what would happen if a Pokemon had not just two types, or three, or even four but every single type in the game at once. And then, and then, what if we gave that Pokemon an attack that was also every type in the game? Would it be busted, mediocre, terrible? Would it be an unstoppable god, a demon, a joke? There's only one way to find out. Richard, hit that intro. Okay, so when I first started this process, I thought it was going to be super complicated with many sleepless nights pouring over every single type combination in the game, running my TI-84 plus dry, and getting that multiplication sign branded into my finger, but then I realized it was actually super easy. To start, I just plugged the Pokemon type chart into a spreadsheet. Remember, on this side we have the attacking type, and on the top we have the defending type. Since our defending Pokemon is every single type at once, we just need to multiply everything in each row together and we can find out what sort of multiplier each type is getting when they try to attack us. If we do that, we find that, unsurprisingly, this is a super solid defensive Pokemon. First of all, you'll notice that the type chart kind of works like that really mean teacher you had in the fourth grade. You know the one where if one kid acted out, they would just punish the whole class equally. Seriously, what was up with that? What were they hoping the kids would take matters into their own hands, beat the crap out of Tommy, chuck rocks at him behind the playground because they made them all have silent snack time? What is this, a prison? As I think I perfectly communicated with that spot-on analogy, if there is just one immunity in a row, that's a time zero multiplier. Anything multiplied by zero is still zero, so it doesn't matter how high or low anything else is, one immunity wipes the whole bunch. This means that our Pokemon would be immune to eight 
different types. Normal, fighting, poison, ground, ghost, electric, psychic, and dragon. Looking at all of these, you might be inclined to think that maybe, maybe damage isn't the way to go. You might be tempted to try and get a status condition on there, maybe a, a toxic or something. And you know what? That would be a great idea if it weren't terrible, because being every single type also happens to grant it immunity to every single major status condition in the game with the exception of sleep and some minor status conditions like confusion since moves like confuse ray aren't affected by immunities. On top of that, it resists steel and dark and has a whopping 16 times resistance to both bug and grass. Get absolutely dunked on Parasect. Everything else hits it for neutral damage, but there is one type that can hit this monstrosity for super effective damage, making it technically the best offensive type in the game in terms of coverage. Rock, hitting with a simple two times modifier. Just like Charizard and Tommy, all you gotta do to stop this thing is chuck some rocks at it. I feel like this episode is having a, a real weird message at this point. <laughs> Yeah, take that, Tommy! Maybe you'll think next time before you talk while Mrs. Smith is talking you like- oh. oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's not Tommy, that's uh- Oh, uh, you, you okay, man? I did- I, I wait! There he is! Tommy's disguised himself as a subscribe button! Come here, you- uh. Hey, hey, he's getting away! Wait a minute, I see him! He's hiding below this video! You there! Do you want the privilege of talking during snack time back? Then scroll down below this video and give that subscribe button a nice hearty poke, a click, ruffle him up a bit, maybe ring a bell in his face. Hurry, the future of snack time depends on you. Oh, so that's the first part of the question answered, but we are only halfway done. We've got our Pokemon of every type, but what would happen if we gave it a move of every type. This one's a bit trickier to figure out because unlike Pokemon, every move only ever has one type. Every move, that is, except for one. To answer this question, we first need to look to Halucha. Ah! Oh god, Halucha is a fighting and flying type luchador themed Pokemon and it has a signature move called Flying Press, or better known to me, as the Frog Splash. This move is listed in game as a fighting type move, but if you read the description, you'll find that it's actually a fighting and flying type move simultaneously. But what does that mean? Well, just like dual type Pokemon, adding another type to a move changes the type chart, and you need to multiply together the multipliers for both fighting and flying on each type you've attacked. However, at its core, it is still technically only a fighting type attack, so it's not like you're getting double same type attack bonus. So no, unfortunately, our omni typed attack wouldn't get stabbed 18 times, just once. Okay, so back to the type chart. In order to find the resistances, we multiplied across every row, so in order to find the type coverage, we just need to multiply down every column. And when we do, we find that this attack is, honestly, trash. You see, while Tommy's shenanigans actually helped us with resistances, granting us a ton of free immunities, for type coverage, it's not as cool. Now, if the Pokemon you are attacking has any sort of immunity, any at all, they are guaranteed to be immune to this attack. This means that any normal, flying, ground, ghost, steel, dark, or fairy type Pokemon is untouchable. Poison and fire types will resist the attack eight times, water and electric will resist it four times, and dragon will resist it two times. That means that while Pokemon like Tentacruel and Iron Moth might not technically be immune to the attack, they will resist it anywhere from 32 to 64 times. <laughs> Have fun with that. 
Fighting and Bug are the only types that come out neutral, meaning they're the only types in the game that have the same number of resistances and weaknesses, and Rock, Psychic, and Grass all take two times super effective damage, making them among the worst defensive typings in the game. That means that 12 of the 18 types are probably gonna shrug off this Frankenstein's monster of a move, no problem, which honestly makes this attack kind of useless. Unless, of course, you're facing down an ice type. Sure, most Pokemon will laugh off your insane attack, but at least you can still stare that little ice cream cone in the face and know that you can blow it away with eight times super effective damage. Because so many types resist or are flat out immune to this attack, nine times out of 10 when you use it, they're probably gonna eat it like it's a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch. That's not an exaggeration, by the way. I did the math. Let's break it down. Of the 1,194 Pokemon currently in the game, including different forms and stuff, 591 Pokemon will be flat out immune to this attack. That's just shy of half of every Pokemon in the game. And that's not even counting Pokemon that gain immunities through their abilities or anything, so it could very well be higher. So already, if you're using this attack, you've got, at best, a coins toss chance of doing literally nothing. Of the 603 Pokemon that are taking damage, 358 will resist the attack to some degree. That means that there are only 245, or roughly 12% of all the Pokemon in the game that will take neutral damage or better. 88% of the time, this attack is gonna suck pretty bad. Now that seems terrible, until you realize that you can use Forest Curse on a Mr. Rhyme, and then hit it with this attack for 32 times super effective damage. So really, it's the best move in the game when you think about it. And there you have it. A Pokemon with every single type is a very good defensive Pokemon. An attack with every type, on the other hand, kinda sucks. Now, I could end the video there, but I know what you're all thinking. And you know what? We've come this far, I might as well see it through to the end. If you had a Pokemon of every single type attack another Pokemon, of every single type, with an attack that was every single type, what's going down? Well, since our attack is all 18 types, and our defending Pokemon is all 18 types, that means that every single multiplier in this table is at play. So we need to multiply every single thing in here together. When we do, we get zero, obviously. You know Tommy's been up to his shenanigans again, but if we, uh, if we give him a stern talking to about his behavior and gave our attacker an ability that just let it ignore immunities, kind of like Scrappy, but for everything. That's the official name, by the way. Kind of like Scrappy, but for everything, we can go ahead and turn all the zeros into ones. If we do that and multiply everything, we find that our final multiplier for the attack, I promise that's the last time I'll say multiplier in this video, is one over 2048. Factoring in the same type of attack bonus, you'll find that you are dealing 1365 times less damage than normal. If our attack was like, say, Judgment, and had a base power of 100, it would drop down to a base power of 0 0.073. Just to put that in perspective, a non-stab constrict on an Aggron has an effective base power of 2.5, one of the worst possible in the game. In order to match that base power, you'd need to use this Omni-type attack 34 times. It just goes to show that if you ever find yourself facing down an Eldritch Horror comprised of every known element in the universe, you're better off just throwing a rock at it. Why? One more time for the road, it's all about that multiple. Oh.